you are the universe expressing itself as a human for a little while. When I finally understood the meaning of these lines by this philosopher Eckhart Tolle, I had a sense of realization. A realization of the opportunity that we have in our hands as human beings. You see, all of us are these tiny particles in this gigantic universe. And all of us have a role to play. What role can these tiny particles play? What role can these tiny particles bring? What impact can we make? Leading to a much more larger question, what is our purpose in life? Who has this question? What is our purpose in life? Like many of us, I was once clueless and confused on to what is my purpose. You see, we live in a society where we're constantly told about what do you want to be when you grow up? Or the Gen Next version of it is follow your passion. But very rarely in our life, we're asked to focus on what we want to do, what purpose do we want to serve. My name is Natasha. I'm an entrepreneur and I've been one since the age of 17. When somebody asked me, Natasha, what do you want to be when you grow up? I always said, I want to be an entrepreneur since the age of 11. I was very clear in my head that I would run my own business one day. But life has its own plans. In 2011, I was trying to find my foothold here in India. But one fine night, I had a freak accident. A freak accident that burned half of my face to my neck. There I was late at night in the government hospital and thinking about what's happening. How the hell did I land it up here? You see, I came back to India on a mission, a mission to become part of the India growth story. The whole startup culture was really thriving and I wanted to be a part of it. But there I was, sitting in the government hospital with bandages wrapped all around my face and neck, scared, confused, and thinking about what's next. A couple of months were very difficult mentally and physically, of course. And I used to remember, I remember waking up every night thinking about what's going to be of my life. I refused to look into the mirrors at times and thinking, I don't want to see the person that's going to be the reflection of it is. My doctor told me, Natasha, you're going to work with your mind. You're an entrepreneur, not with your face, right? And whatever he said was the utmost truth. It took my self-esteem to a different level. I went into the situation of self-doubting myself, very low in self-esteem, and thinking about what's next. As I told you earlier, my passion truly is entrepreneurship. And I wanted to be a businesswoman since the age of 11. So I kept thinking about it. There were two voices in my head. One voice that said, you can dwell in self-pity. You can sit here, relax, go back to your family, give yourself a break, and then probably move on. The other voice that said, you took all that beating to come here on a mission, and you're just going to go back like that? So me being an obsessive entrepreneur that I am, I listened to the second voice. Within the seven months of my accident, I, I co-founded my first company in 2011. That went into on, on to become a big success. But today's story is not about that success. It's not about that entrepreneurial hustle. It's about the journey that I took. You see, I took that call at that point of time, the lowest of my point, where it, and I wanted to become this entrepreneur. I covered all my emotions. I didn't even give my time self to heal. My hustle, my work became my healing. I started doing that entrepreneurial hustle, scaled my company to a certain extent. Everything was going hunky-dory, everything was good. I was doing what I wanted to do since the age of 11. I was happy, I was scaling up. And I kind of became the entrepreneur who bought a flashy red car with her first million. I finally was the businesswoman that I wanted to be. But there was something missing. 
something in the stomach was always missing. I thought, am I happy? Yes, I am happy. Am I content? Probably not. Do I have money? Yes, I do have money. So what do we do when we look for contentment? I read somewhere, you will feel content when you find your purpose. So what do we do when we start looking for a purpose? We go to events like these, right? We read self-help books. That's what I did. I started putting myself out there, out of my comfort zone, and being an introvert, trust me, it was a nightmare for me to talk to people. I used to attend such events, sitting there in the audience, looking at the speaker, and awestruck by what everybody had to say. Awestruck by the impact these guys were bringing along to the world. And there I was, sitting in the audience, just like many of you now, going back more confused, going back with more questions than answers. And very soon, it started becoming frustrating. That whole exercise of finding my purpose started becoming really frustrating. Frustrating to a level where I gave it up. I went back to my whole entrepreneurial cocoon and said, OK, I want to take a break. One fine day, I get a call. I get a call from my family saying that my maternal grandfather, who I really loved the most, is on his deathbed. Now, this is the guy that gave me hope in life, belonging to an orthodox Hawaii family. He was the only person that told me, Natasha, that you could become whatever you want to become. And there I was, about to lose him forever. He was a very fine man, a very simple man. He used to work in a forest department as a government employee, cycling from one city to another to provide for his family. But more than that, he wanted to do that for his purpose. He loved nature. And as I was standing right next to him while he was taking his last breath, his eyes opened for that one last time, and he exhaled. In that moment, I felt the beauty of the peace. He had a look on his face, the look of contentment. I felt contentment for the very first time in my life in that moment. You see, death is not like how society tells us. It's not like South Indian movies also. It's the most beautiful experience that eventually all of us are going to have one day. But what could destroy that experience for us? Another leading to a larger question, that what if we are on our deathbed one day thinking about that I did not live my life with the purpose? What I started doing, a lot of thoughts, you know, when we are sitting alone, we are conversing with ourselves. And this experience of my nanajis that kind of led me to think, where am I going wrong? You see, the frustration earlier out of finding my purpose was clearly coming out of expectations. And expectations are not humble. We want clear results. We want results then and there only. I was going into these experiences thinking that I'm going to find my purpose that day. But I was coming frustrated because I was expecting a lot of things. But then the shift happened. The shift was probably, how about using the word intentions? How about we get into these experiences with intentions? Intention is a very humble word. It's a very wise word. Without looking at the outcome of whatever we want, we experience and we let go. We let go and we think about whatever the universe has to teach me through this, it will teach me. So that's what intention started happening. You see, we talk about building a purpose. Now, there are three simple questions we talk about while finding or building a purpose. Number one is, who am I? Number two is, what I want? And number three is, how can I serve? Now, sitting right there, if I ask you these three questions, some of you may find these answers very quickly, and some of you might be clueless. 
Now, how to find these answers? I figured out a tool. Do you want to know about the tool, guys? Let me tell you about the tool. The tools are experiences. Now, there was this one time, let me just tell you a story. There was this one time when my fashion content team wanted to go for a fashion shoot up in the mountain. They wanted to shoot this beautiful winter wear collections up in the mountain. So I was like, OK, I want to tag along with you guys. So I decided to tag along. We hiked up to the mountain. It was a beautiful village, no electricity. For some reason, there were a lot of donkeys and goats around. I don't know what was the reason. And there was millet fields all around, a very beautiful space. After a long day of photo shoot, of course, we were fulfilled that we had a great photo shoot done. We sat for our supper late at night, sitting in the dark with just one candlelight burning. The sound of the wind was so calm, and we were sitting in the dark completely having the yummiest supper that I had in my life most raw food. I thought, wow, this is what life is. This is what happiness is. But then universe had something in store for me. As I was walking out to get into the hut that I was staying at, I looked up into the sky and I saw this. This was the most magical sky that I've ever experienced in my life. So I sat on the floor just to see what it has to offer. And it for the very first time, I was in a conversation with the universe. There was no past, no future, only present in that moment. It felt like the universe was talking to me, conversing with me. And like how there is Orion belt and all of that, you see all those dots connected? all the dots started connecting in my head. Well, did I find my purpose that day? No, I did not. But I found one center point to build my purpose on. You see, finding is expectations, and building is intention. I want to take the control of my destiny and my purpose in my own hand. And that's what I did. Soon enough, I started experimenting with these experiences as a tool, putting myself into different experiences with intentions. At times, I would find myself talking to strangers and having the most profound conversations about life, sometimes with animals, too. All these experiences were putting myself into finding the dots bit by bit. There's not going to be one eureka moment that we're going to have to find the purpose. Everything is just going to come bit by bit. You see, universe is a co-creator. Our purpose is co-created by the universe with us. So that's what experiences did to me. Now, after all these experiences, have I built my purpose? The answer is yes, I have. I know what I want to do in life. I know how I want to serve in life. As I told you earlier, my passion is entrepreneurship. I love solving problems. That's my true obsession. I'm obsessed about it. But this sort of a journey made me a more mindful entrepreneur, an entrepreneur that just does not think about earning money. It thinks about earning money and then giving back, giving back in many objective ways. This is where I have conversations with myself, that my relation with money is very strong today. Because I think of money as a tool. I think of money as this powerful tool. That more compassionate people need to earn more of money. More compassionate people need to have more of money in their lives so they could serve and give back. All these experiences made me a mindful entrepreneur. Now what do we do? We build our purpose bit by bit. Just like the Orion Belt. And that's how a beautiful story comes across in our life. Leaving on to, of course, now there are many videos that will be playing. That's how you build your purpose dot by dot. You see, these experiences, the one that we're experiencing right now in this platform, in this, in this beautiful auditorium today, this is an experience 
that we need to utilize and get into with intentions. Intent to go back something with that one connecting dot for our life. This platform is a very beautiful platform. Let's kind of give it a thought. That what if one fine day, let's ask ourselves these questions. That what if we open the arms to all the experiences that this earth has to offer. We stop living in the past glories. We all have been successful, we all have earned money. We might not be there yet. We have done something in our life. But we keep living in the past glories that I have I done that in year 2000 something. Let's stop living in that past glory and think about next. Or maybe think about now. What if we stop giving ourselves into that pity zone? Oh my God, this happened to me. I'm a survivor. Let's stop doing that. And what if we are lying on a deathbed one day thinking that I lived my life with a purpose? That's what we all are aiming at. We are here to serve. Why? Because we are the universe expressing itself as a human for a little while. So guys, let's make that one little while count for the society and for the world. Thank you so much.